Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and strength. Before the mountains were born, or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant whose long life was spent in your service. Give her a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest and is and rest is sure for all who serve. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sit. For the first, let us listen to the first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from toil? I have considered the task which God has appointed for us to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into our hearts without ever discovering from beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Second reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. 
It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, there will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part, and prophecy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall fully know, even though I am fully known. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, first I want to welcome all of you who have come here to be with the family as they mourn and the passing of their mother, grandmother, and celebrate her life of faith in Jesus. 
So welcome to all of you. Today, is, this afternoon, is a solemn moment, but also a moment of gratitude to God. Gratitude to God to the life of our sister, Roland. God works in great ways that sometimes, because it seems to be a common thing we take for granted, Besides the words you have chosen of the gospel today, do not let your hearts be troubled. I had chosen Psalm 90 as a point of, of, of reflection for all of us. And that Psalm 90 is the psalm that Father Frederick began the opening prayer of the Mass with it. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Before the mountains were born, all the earth formed from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortars. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is, that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. In verse 10, the psalmist says, the days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80, if we are strong. So Roland was one of those who was strong. She lived to be 100 years. A few days before she answered the call to glory, on the Saturday before uh, the Sunday of Divine Mercy, the family had gathered at Edom to celebrate her 100th birthday. And then on Sunday night, around 10 p.m., the Lord called me, oh, Father, there is somebody here who the family wants you to come and anoint. At that time, I didn't know it was Roland. And then I went there. And I met the family gathered around her, the palliative care room. And so I anointed her. Perhaps that was the third time or fourth time I had anointed her. I had anointed her previous times before. Once earlier in the year, she had gone to hospital. And I had gone to anoint another person. Then I entered her room because I knew her room. So I entered her room, and two of her daughters were there with her. And so, I, I anoint, so this last anointing I gave her was like the fourth time I had anointed her. And then she revived, became strong again for a few days before God called her home. The gospel that you chose today as a family says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And why would our hearts not be troubled? As human beings, definitely, our hearts are troubled. Our hearts are broken anytime we lose someone we love, as obviously you, the family, are broken by the death of your mother and grandmother and great-grandmother, Roland. It is a human thing to weep and to mourn and to shed tears when we lose someone. But beyond that, the tears, which are a natural thing, is also the hope that we have as believers. As part of our Mass every day, we proclaim our faith in God. 
and we renew every, at every Mass our faith in the resurrection. And we say in the, in the Nicene Creed, for instance, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection from the dead, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray in the Apostles' Creed. So in this formula, we reaffirm what we believe every time we come to the Mass, the resurrection of the dead. And it is that hope in the resurrection that has that nourished the life of our sister Roland all through her life. It is that hope in the resurrection that has brought all of us here as well. To pray, to celebrate, to commit our sister to God and ask God to have mercy on her and forgive her failings as she was a human being and call her to that blessed hope of rising again. We are still in the Easter season, the time we celebrate the central mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. This is what we celebrate at Easter. We've been celebrating since the 9th of April, the Easter season, the heart of our faith. And is it not a blessed thing that our sister answered the call of God to come home in this season and in the immediate aftermath of Divine Mercy Sunday? And when I went there to anoint her, after the anointing and the litany, I thought perhaps we could pray the rosary together with the family and then one of the sons, who was that? So, Father, let's pray the divine mercy instead. So we prayed the divine mercy there. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Our hearts are not troubled because we know that our God is a God of mercy. And in the divine mercy we say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. God has had mercy on us. God has given us a new lease of life. And even when our body here decays, here on earth, as we say in the preface of the Mass, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven where there is no more death, no more sorrow, and no more tears. Our sister believed, hoped in that resurrection, and that hope nourished her all through her earthly journey. In that Psalm 90, say, teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom of heart. Teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom of heart. God has taught us. He has taught us in Jesus, his son. He has taught us that this life is transient. We are here as pilgrims, and we pass through here. And while we are on this pilgrimage, God in Jesus has taught us to number our days. How do we number our days? We are aware that, yes, at a certain time we stand before God, one time, could be for like our sister a hundred years, for some a few years, some even more than a hundred years. We number our days by hearing, by listening to Jesus, allowing him to come into our lives and transform our lives and live in that hope of the resurrection. So we pray and ask God to have mercy on her. For you, the family, who are here, even as you mourn, 
I want and invite you to celebrate the life of your mother, your grandmother and great-grandmother. She always had a mischievous smile anytime I went to her room or anytime that I went there to celebrate the Eucharist at the lodge there. And every time I was giving communion, she would always take the communion with her hand. I said the body of Christ, she would reach out her hand and take it by herself and receive it. She was nourished by this body of Jesus all through her life. So even as you feel the sense of loss, rejoice because our sister is united with God. For all of us who are here, any time that we come to a moment like this, it's a moment for us to reflect. Our lives on earth are transient. And Society today would want us to believe that all that we believe here that has gathered us here is nothing to be worried about. It's nothing, there's not, no life beyond this one. And that is wrong. Our faith teaches us that it's a life beyond this life. And in this life, we have pains and sorrows, and we are broken by pain and all that breaks us. But in the life of the world to come, that Jesus promises to those who believe in him, those who follow him, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus assures us in that life, there is no more pain, no more sorrow, and no more death. I've not yet been to Rome, but I heard that in the chapel of the Franciscans, the general house in Rome, in, one of, in their chapel that there is one part of the wall, there's a glass, a glass sort of display, Place and inside that glass are the bones of some of their dead brothers, skeletal bones, skull bones, all of them in that glass case. And they have put something across it. Remember, and this message is for all of us too where you are. I once was there. And where I am, the bone speaking, now the skeletal bone speaking, where I am, you too will one day be there. I'm just paraphrasing the words, not exact quote. But something like that. Where you are, our sister Roland once was. And where she is, one day we too will be there. Teach us to number our days that we may gain wisdom of heart. God has taught us in Jesus. Let us come to him and ask him to continue to teach us. And we pray and ask that today, as we celebrate this Mass, God's mercy will cover our sister, Roland, give her a new life, and I'm sure that she's with God's angels, with a mischievous smile, and praying for us, and that she's even here with us in spirit at this celebration of this funeral mass.
Let us turn Sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Our response is hear our prayer. Our in baptism, Roland received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our sister Roland was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the family members who have gone before us, especially our brother John, our sister Helen, and our brothers Donnie and Corey. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for those in our communities who are struggling, both physically and mentally. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for the safety of those who are traveling to be here with us today. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Roland. Strengthen our hope that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted with the God, the Almighty Father. May the yes. Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Roland, may be taken up into of glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of a blessed resurrection has done that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be, con might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for you are faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. So without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, our Lord, the front of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered well into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Roland whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph has pounds, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Good day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I've been given the honor of being up here to speak on Grandma's behalf. Um, as a strong endorser of her uh, devilish smile and smirks that she may have, that's probably why I've been asked to come up here, so I apologize in advance. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here in such a distingu distinguished church and to have a gathering of all the local people that are a big influence in her life and who else she's also influenced. So, in loving memory of Roland Celine Marie Rose Desolet, Roland Deslitz was born to Theophile and Suzanne Delange on April 15, 1923, at the St. Wahlberg Hospital. She had one older sister, Helen. When Roland was an infant, her mother passed away tragically, and five months of, at five months of age, she was taken in by Alfred and Marie Durez, who would become her parents, with her father still visiting several times a year. Her sister then joined her at the Durez family. She gained nine siblings from the family, as the Durezes had seven children of their own and were also raising a niece and nephew at nine years of age. Roland and Helen moved back with their father in the Fremont area, a difficult move as their father was like a stranger to them, and the Durezes had become her parents. She returned to the Paradise Hill area after a few years and continued to be part of the Durez clan. She attended the Perch Lake School while with the Durez family and then the Flat Lake School in the Fremont area. She enjoyed attending a Flat Lake School as they had lots of sports, softball, basketball, and many other sports days that she was very passionate about. Her love of sports carried on in her entire life, including being a team manager for Sioux's hockey team. Her and John watched baseball on TV, attended local hockey games regularly. She belonged to the lo local bowling league Anyone who knew her and knows what an avid curling fan she was. She attended the Briar in the Winnipeg and her, in her late 80s and the Scotties Tournament at the Hearts of Edmonton in her 90s. She watched curling every winter, all winter long, and knew every curler by name and what teams they had been played on and some of their history. She completed the last weeks of her life watching the curling championships and could tell you her favorite players and teams. She began her work career at 15 years of age and worked for local families. Her work consisted of outdoor farm chores and the household duties for local families, including the Grandes, Brazards, Des, 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 Mateers, and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, um, and then for, for Emile Prince in the store and the post office. Roland was a committed and hardworking woman she gave 110% at everything she did, and her homemaking skills had been all honed and they never uh, faltered. She was an amazing cook, baker, homemaker, gardener, caregiver. She took great pride in her family, home, garden, and yard. Anyone who ever visited never ever went hungry. She always had the need to feed everyone, whether you were hungry or not. I'm for that, sorry. <laughs> um, as, a, as a family, we were reminiscing about her homemade buns and decided we could not count as high as the, the number of buns that she had made in her life. Linda has recently mastered grandma's buns and now the next generation is tasked with learning the skill from you. So we appreciate it and look forward to it. Absolutely delicious. Um, Linda's made buns on for her 100th birthday weekend just recently and they brought back many memories and stories. Her need to feed and nurture people had not stopped. If you visited her at the care home or at the lodge, she had a drawer or two full of treats to be able to offer company a snack. In 1943, she married John Desolitz, her husband of 59 years. In 1945, they purchased a sand bill store and moved in on Southeast 2 of 52 of 24 and remodeled it to make it livable. They raised their four children, Louis, Jerry, Don, and Sue, on the family farm. This farm holds many fond memories for everyone who ever visited. It was the place of dozens of Sunday dinners with families and friends and large gatherings, family gatherings on Saturday evenings with neighbors, cousins to play cards and visits were the norm. The market garden out back provided 
for the family year round, the countless summers where the cousins uh, came to visit for a week or more and spend time in the country to ride horses and maybe be dared to ride a pig or two. Great stories, we must share them with each other. <laughs> Nowadays that may not have gone over so well and they may have been in a little more trouble with their parents. Some of them gained this mischievous side from both parents. She pretended like the sweet little innocent one that we all know. She pretended like she was innocent, but grandma was in trouble her fair share as a young girl also. To there, there's a story about her being in a hurry to go play and throwing her Sunday hat on the front step and the pigs decided they'd have a nice little meal. And back in those days, having a Sunday hat was very important. Um, she always said Grandpa John was the, the prankster in our family, but we saw some of the, the shenanigans her and her friends pulled also. She had an amazing friends, and it was a wonderful for the siblings to look back on the fond times they had together growing up, whether helping each other out or just having a great time and making cherished memories. She outlived most of her friends, and this was a difficult reality for her. During the pandemic, this was especially significant Visited, visits were limited, isolation was horrible, and she lost a lot of, uh, of her independence and mobility as she had to give up her walker and use a wheelchair, something which was still bone of contention in her last days. She was a fiercely, independently proud woman and did not wish to give, give up on it easily. As a parent, grandmother, great-grandmother, she never took the job lightly. She expected all of her offspring to achieve their potential, whatever that was. She was proud of each of their accomplish accomplishments. Maybe she did not say it directly to them all the time at the time, but the sparkle in her eye when she would clearly tell people what accompl accomplished farmer Louie was, that Jerry owned a logging company for years and was now following his dreams as of being a rancher and riding horses every day of the year, that Don had worked for Husky until his retirement and had raised an amazing young man for a son and that Sue was a social worker a job and a job that was really taxing but ensured children were safe. She loved her daughter-in-laws passionately and beamed when she referred to them and knew everyone had found their, their person. She was the proudest grandmother in the world. She could recall all of these kids' birth dates and who they belonged to and to what interest they had. She attended more graduations and weddings than you can imagine. She did, did hear, or sorry, she did her last big trip to British Columbia at the age of 93 years young to attend Bryn, Bryn's wedding. We would have thought she could, and who would have thought she could have made it to midnight for the midnight dance with over 50% of the wedding party had already gone to bed. She was still out on the dance floor. She spent an additional 35 minutes past that and then we got her back to bed. But it was amazing to have her out there with live music, live band, and a 40-acre parcel. Um, as a grandmother, if she suspected the grandkids were not performing to their potential, they would get the grandma talk. And I'm sure some of the friends have had that and we encourage you to share those stories with us later today. She only wanted the best and did not want any of them to take, uh, not take advantage of the opportunities that, that were in front of them. She was always in their corner to cheer them on. She never stopped parenting in her hundred years. She still asked us to call when we arrived home to our destinations after visiting her. In her last days, she told people um, to, to get that cough looked after, if you had one, or if you could, because <clears throat> that seemed to be a startling thing these days. One of the guys had a sore on their nose at, at the lodge and she says in the middle of the night, don't be picking your nose. <laughs> it is quite a feat to keep track of her four children, 15 grandchildren, 25 great-grandchildren and three great-great-grandchildren. And she was a godparent to several important young and men and women that were influential in her life. Roland belonged to the CWL for, 60, for over 66 years, assisted in organizing several homecoming celebration, celebrations. She was community-minded and always actively involved in helping out uh, and was a pillar of the community. Roland and John lived in the farm in the Paradise Hill area until retirement where they built their new home in the village of Paradise Hill, just to roll around the corner. 
Roland and John then lived in the senior's apartment for several years. John passed during this time. Roland later moved to Paradise Hill Care Home for several years. And when she required more assistance, she moved to the Lakeland Lodge in the St. Walberg, where she resided for the, the last seven years of her life. In 100 years, she witnessed an incredible amount of change from writing with a slat to using an iPad. She lived through the Spanish flu, TB epidemic, World War I and II, the Dirty Thirties, Dust Bowls, and the COVID pandemic, and on and on as the list goes on, and witnessed a number of changes for the good as well. Um, she, but one of the funniest comments she made was at this Easter Sunday, just recently, uh, when discussing celebrating her 100th birthday and what an accomplishment it was, her response was when we inquired any words of wisdom is, I don't recommend it to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> to all the staff at the Paradise Hill Care Home and Lakeland Lodge, thank you for your care and compassion you showed throughout all the years. Uh, to Louie and Linda, Sue and Cheryl, and the many others, excuse me, who were here to support Grandma, <clears throat> Must be the air anyway, it'll stop me, sorry. <laughs> um, Grandma, we thank you for your unconditional love and support you shared for them, for her care. Um, and then the, a memory is a photograph taken by the heart to make a special moment forever. As a mom, grandma, great grandma, we will miss you forever and we love you and feel truly privileged to have had you as part of our lives. Um, we invite everyone to join us for the internment at the Paradise Hill Cemetery, followed by the lunch at Paradise Hill Community Hall to share stories, gather and reminisce, um, and enjoy some good laughs. Thank you all for joining us uh, from near and far. Thank you.
and to wait on faith in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. Amen. Dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace.